There's a cop who according to the report committed the heinous act of sexual assaulting an incapacitated person. Put up the mug shot of this cop, okay? Keith Ryan Williamson, a Columbia Police Department officer was arrested Friday and accused of sexually assaulting an incapacitated person, according to state agents. He was fired from the department shortly after his arrest. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division charged Keith Ryan Williamson with third degree criminal sexual conduct stemming from an assault in October. In October, Officer Williamson was close to his 12th year with the Columbia Police Department. On October 30th or 31st, this cop, according to the report, accomplished sexual battery with the victim and had reason to know that the victim was incapacitated at the time of the assault. That's according to the arrest warrant. Evidence for his arrest came from interviews with Williamson, the victim, medical records, digital records, and other sources according to the warrant. Columbia Police Chief Skip Holbrook fired Officer Williamson Friday after his arrest, citing improper conduct by the officer. Williamson had been suspended prior to his arrest, the department said. Well, isn't that interesting? So you can just fire cops, it's possible. You can say you're fired and they are. The investigation into Williamson began when an unspecified person filed a complaint in October against the cop with the Columbia Police Department. Investigators said the person alleged Williamson had acted criminally. Columbia Police immediately informed SLED investigators, that's common, about the allegation against Williamson, the department said. A South Carolina code of law says that one standard for third degree criminal sexual conduct is when The actor knows or has reason to know that the victim is mentally defective, mentally incapacitated or physically helpless. And aggravated force or aggravated coercion was not used to accomplish sexual battery. Williamson could go to prison for 10 years if found guilty of third degree criminal sexual conduct. Now, here's what you're not hearing. You're not hearing the DA, you're not hearing the prosecutors who have already charged the guy. Say something like, we are going to prosecute this cop to the fullest extent of the law for violating the public trust. Why? Why do we not hear that language? We cannot let prosecutors off the hook when it comes to prosecuting these heinous crimes in our communities. We have allowed the narrative to go on unchecked too long because typically, People like this, they never get the maximum. They never get penalized to the fullest extent. The prosecutor doesn't even try. And let me say this, let me say this. I told you this earlier in the week. When they don't charge the cop with violation of oath of office, typically the fix is already in. When that charge is also on the charge docket, that means Typically, they are serious about the prosecution. Now, we're going to see if my theory holds up here because there is no violation of oath of office on this docket. The reason typically they don't do it is because they know that charge is so broad that this cop is guaranteed to be convicted and never will be allowed to be a cop again, okay? You don't see violation of oath here, that's a problem. Jackson thoughts. Yeah, I think that what you pointed out about how in fact cops can be fired at will is is very true when they want it to be. And this is another example of the power of culture because this cop was fired because what he did was uncomfortable for enough people across the board Mm. that there was really no argument. However, killing an unarmed black man or woman is just another Tuesday and there must have been a good reason for it, which again is the power of culture. Um, You know, this guy had been on the force for quite some time. I'm sure that he had shown signs that he was capable of things like this more than once. So, uh, you know, again, it's definitely good that he was arrested and let's continue to shed light on things like this. Yeah, and here's what we know just based on statistical data. 
Uh, typically an individual like this, it is not his first time offending in this manner. Uh, that's why I advocate for a psychological examination of all police officers every six months to one year. Typically, every police officer has to go through an initial psychological evaluation. But the reality is this, the cop you hire on day one may be a different cop on day 365. And you have to be able to pick up on these dynamics. That's one way to figure out who is likely to be a ticking time bomb on your force. And when you advocate for that position, Jackson, they say things like, well, we don't have enough money to do that. Of course. What? Y'all don't have enough money. Wait a minute. I thought we were all for making sure law enforcement had everything they needed. And if the goal is public safety, that's an element that adds to the public safety of the community. Well, as long as they have money for military equipment, mm. that's, that's what they need more of. So, yeah. you know, because they don't have enough of it. Exactly.